short and illustrious list. I of, thought you were talking about yourself there, Adam. Short and illustrious. Yeah, both <laughs> those things are true. So that's the way it's going to be today, Craig. Uh, sh- small and illustrious list. That's still, still the same. Still, still works. Of, uh, of father-son pod duos yes. in uh, Carolina Insider history. Yep. The Merlettis. Yep. Both potty winners. Both potty no winners. No pressure, Creighton. You could, you're, you could win a potty. And I feel like maybe one There's other. There was another one. But I can't remember. But I do know this one for sure. Jeff Lebo has been on here. And today, Creighton Lebo yeah. is on here, completing the father-son duo. Yeah. Creighton, how excited are you for this incredibly big moment? I'm excited. It's been a long time uh, coming for this. So I've been waiting. You know, It's been, what, four years? So it's I mean, finally, it, finally getting on here. In all honesty, <laughs> Adam and I thought you had been on. Like We were like... Like, who Some people mix me and Dewey Ferris up. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's really easy. He's been on here. It could have been Dewey, maybe Rob. I also thought that your name was on the board, and I actually saw it earlier today. Oh, it's right over there. But then I saw that for somebody that says number 12. Like, obviously, that's not Creighton. I, think, I, that, I think that's Cassie Sumfest, former, uh, so not the former same. field hockey player. Great Tar Heel there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we wanted to wait until now so you would have all the good stories built up oh, so yeah. that you could tell them all at wow. one time. But right now, the, the best story is the Tar Heels are winning. I imagine people feeling good, happy happy week of practice. Yeah, that's always good when we're winning, for sure. Practice is a lot, you know, it's always better when you're winning. It's just <laughs> as simple as that. But, um, yeah, we're excited. We're super pumped. What's got this team playing well in your mind? Um, I think just we're just our togetherness and we're really just locked in, you know, everyone's kind of put aside, you know, like the individual aspect of trying to, you know, just, just everybody just wants to win. I think at this point, you know, especially just even the, the guys who have transferred in, the guys who have been here, we all just kind of, you know, want to just win and want to do whatever it takes to win. So I think just, and I also think when it comes with winning, like when you start to win a few games, it's a lot easier to keep on rolling. Mm-hmm. So, um, just having to win these couple games, and I think we're just getting started in terms of you know the winning aspect of the season. Is that, in your opinion, a byproduct of an older team? Like at this point, like look, like all this other, we've done all this other stuff. There's been good, there's been not good. That like it's just time to just try and do this. Yeah, I think it's just we got a lot. Of, I mean, we're an old team in general. You know, even the guys who are you know younger just are just mature guys in general. So. I think just being older, you know, everyone just understands, you know, what it takes, and, you know, and, the, and even the guys who are younger are looking up and seeing those older guys and what it, you know, doing what they're doing besides, you know, practice and just getting in the gym, getting extra shots and just the focus aspect of it. You mm-hmm. know, they're all watching them and just understanding how important it is just to, you know, stay locked in. I think that's really helped us just in terms of, you know, the season. Younger, more mature guys. Nobody's more mature than Zayden High. <laughs> um, you mentioned this, and Coach Davis mentioned this uh, when we talked to him earlier about just the togetherness of the team and how much they like each other. And that's kind of one of those intangible things that people say. And I think sometimes people hear it and think, is that really true? I, what What have you actually seen that has made you actually think, you know what, this – there's something different about the chemistry of this group going back to June or July or whenever you first saw it. Um, yeah, I think the guys just that come in, you know, just we just clicked really well. It was just easy to get along with. You know, everyone, you know, just always talking. Like no one's ever quiet. So it's like, you know, some I feel like sometimes in the past, like, yeah, people were quiet, kind of did their own thing. This year, everyone's always wanted to hang out. You know, um, just like the trip when we went to the Outer Banks, that was super fun. You know, just everything was like connecting us. It's just like it. Everyone just like we'll send a text message. Hey, who wants to go get dinner? And you know we'll all just go and get like it's just stu- stuff we haven't done in the past at least um, to this extent. You know, and it's just like all the guys are just really fun to be around. You know, laughing, joking, messing around. Um, and I think that really does, like you said, go a long way. And people don't understand like how much if you like being around the people like outside of basketball. You know, like some, you know, it's like different. You might not like them out. You might just there to play with them. They're your teammate. But like we actually generally like each other outside of just playing basketball and like would be friends even if we didn't play basketball. So um, I think that's a huge thing for us. All right, when you get into the game, what in your mind is your level? Shoot of, it. Yeah, no, I was sorry. about to say. No, I was going to say, what is your level of green light in your mind? Is it just like, dude, I've got the ball. It's going up. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I get the ball, everyone knows <laughs> – they should probably just get back on defense because <laughs> I'm trying to shoot it at most of the time. Um, yes. No, I'm, but, uh, no, I just – I always try to get one up at least. Yeah. What's the level of disappointment if, like, you're out there and well, Coach Davis gives it the, like, okay, uh, guys, let's 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 just end this? 
see, that's the thing. I feel like sometimes he doesn't do that much. I think he lets us go unless it's like 15 seconds left. But um, no, but it's always fun. And it's always fun to go out and even not just myself, but like watching other guys score like Dewey and Rob and just guys who don't, you know, get the big chances everyone else. Um, it's just always so much fun to just get in. Because I feel like also like when we get in, one of us usually scores, which yeah. is always awesome. So um, I have just as much fun watching somebody else score as you know scoring myself. So it's been it's been great. Okay, so then two questions really that number one is is there an awareness of who is going to attempt the biscuit shot? Ooh. Like, do you know where the scoreboard is? Oh, I always know <laughs> the score and yeah, what we need to do. We're always like in the corner, like. All right, if we get in, we had to get six points. <laughs> do we have two minutes? Like, is it possible? Like, can we do it? And we're always over there calculating. But, um, yeah, we kind of just – doesn't really. we don't really care who scores. But, like, you know, I always try to get one in there. <laughs> and then I seem to remember there was a, uh, a friendly conversation with you and Coach Sullivan regarding your offensive production this year. Where do we stand on that, uh, that productivity? Yeah, he tried to make some crazy bet. A friendly conversation. <laughs> yeah, about scoring in the game and all this and that. Um, I think technically, like he's won the bet since I didn't <laughs> score the last the last game I got in. But um, I might have to retake him up on it because you know there's some games coming up that could have a chance to get in. So and maybe you double up in those games uh, and we're right back I'm on saying. track. Maybe, yeah, yeah, that could happen. The hand is gonna be hot. Yeah, so. I get the impression that when you were choosing where you wanted to go to school, you could have gone somewhere smaller and probably played a fair amount. Why Why was Carolina, where you knew maybe you wouldn't have as much chance to play as much, why Why was that the right move for you? Um, just growing up watching my dad play here was, you know, something special to me. And, and my mom obviously, went, you know, went here as well. And my aunt did as well. Um, but just growing up, coming to games all the time, like I knew this was a place I wanted to be and – um, just the family aspect. I knew, like, in the end, like, whether I played or not, like, this was going to be better for me in the long run. Um, so that's really what went through my mindset. Also, like, I wanted to play for Coach Williams. Um, you know, what an incredible coach. Um, talking, coming on a visit and talking to Shea Rush about what it's like to be a walk-on. You know, he's talked about how it wasn't any different than being a player. You know, they get the same stuff. They're treated the same. They're expected to do the same exact things and held to the same standard, especially Coach Williams. You know, he was – he, if you got in the game with two minutes left and he would scream and yell at you just like anyone else um, and hold you accountable just like anyone else. So I thought that was really special. And, you know, it was easy for me to just pick to come here. And it's worked out better than I ever thought, you know, with just my dad being able to come here now. You know, it's like been a dream come true for me, really. I was going to ask you, if you had known – that your dad would eventually be on set. <laughs> would you have made the same decision, or do you think it would have changed your decision? I might have had to think about it a little bit longer. I don't know if I wanted to deal with him. I would deal with him all high school. I was trying to get away from him. No, no I think uh, it would have been the same decision. Um, it's been really cool, you know, being him being able to be my coach because um, it hasn't really been able to happen through my childhood because he's always been coaching his, sure. you know, his own teams. So coming full circle with just my grandfather coaching him in high school and now my dad gets to coach me in college, you know, it's been really awesome for our family and, you know, just super unique. Big time coaching family is coach Creighton Lebo in our future at some point. I hope so. That's the plan. Um, that's, that's the goal right now. Trying to get into grad school here. Um, hopefully it can be a GA on the team, stick around for a little bit longer. So that's the, the plan. We'll see if it works out. So super excited. Does your, does your dad get on you as a coach? Like, has he, I mean, I know he can get on you as a dad, obviously, <laughs> but like as a coach, does he get on you during practice? Oh, yeah. He'll, okay. He, he does he single does. you out? He, he will. <laughs> he He's not afraid to. Yeah. Um, I usually try to play as hard as I can when he's out there because I know he's watching me and is in his head. He's thinking, why is he not going a little bit harder? <laughs> but, uh, but um, no, yeah, he treats me just as like anyone else. Did when you were growing up, did you just think all dads were incredibly awesome shooters? You like, I assume my dad's like every other dad, and all these other kids must be going out in the driveway, and their dad's awesome too. No, I knew he was different because I was he. We used to get in the. I used to get so mad because I would try to beat him, and I could not beat him until I was like probably I probably beat him when I was like thirteen or fourteen. <laughs> but until then, 
I was just trying so hard just to beat him, and um, he never took it easy on me. That's for sure. He would right. always try to. And I think he still. I don't know if you ever seen him shoot. He still got a little bit. Of, he can still, still shoot. The stroke's a still bit. there. Yeah. Now, okay, this is going to be awkward for me to tell you this. Adam's mom loved your dad when he was uh, <laughs> when, when he was in school. Her, her all time favorite. <laughs> Have you seen? The, I mean, the hair, like all of it. What a what an incredible college man he was. I'm assuming there. it was great to be Jeff Lebo as yeah. an undergrad. Uh, yeah, I think it was, and then, <laughs> and then, I, I, from what I've heard, I think it was Wait, great. You mean he hadn't shared those stories with you, Creighton? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, maybe not. Shouldn't talk about those on this, but um, no. Yeah, and then if if you saw him a few la- years later, you would think he's a completely different person because he had no hair. <laughs> that coaching will do that to you. Oh yeah. Um, I, hope, I hope when I get to keep all this. That's yeah. what I'm saying. A lot of talk about the Tar Heel post game music here Mm. recently coach davis said he tried to pick the song in charlotte and got some negative reviews if (laughs) if people want to go to the games like say they want to go to smith center on saturday tariels win they want to ride home listening to the same stuff you're listening to in the locker room what do they need to queue up oh gosh um you'll have to ask armando i think we clemson game was a tragedy we had some queued and then nobody liked that song so we had to go to the next song and the next song i don't even know it's probably like little uzi you probably don't want to play that in your car. <laughs> um, Kane Carson, all these people. Like, I don't even know some of these people, but um, we play these songs. We have, like, the same, like, probably 10 songs that we shuffle through before practice, after the game, everywhere. So, like, I don't even know the names of the song, but I could sing you the song because yeah. of how many times I hear it. <laughs> Who's responsible for bringing the boombox? I have honestly no idea. We just upgraded to bring the big boombox on the away games. So, um Dewey usually holds it, but I'm not sure. I think Reagan, our head manager, has been in charge. I think it's a pretty nice boombox, so we have to keep keep up. At that one home game, Jack Hoots brought it out, and that was incredible. Yeah, he was. was I think he about passed out after. (laughs) (laughs) So, what song did Coach Davis choose in Charlotte? Do you remember? He chose some like so. We list a lot of the guys. This is a Rod Wave, which is kind of like an R and B guy who's like doesn't really sing like not a song you really want like music you want to like get pumped up to <laughs> kind of almost like sad hours <laughs> and he had we had played it the, we had played it the day before i think like a, we had played it and everyone was singing it but it was like a before practice thing and i think i guess he thought because everyone was singing it like oh we should play this one right and he played that song after i can't yeah he played that song and everyone looked at each other like oh god like <laughs> next next one please <laughs> But, I mean, at least it, it wasn't a bad song, just not the right time for the song. <laughs> just got to understand the moment. We got to read the room. Yeah. All right, What uh, when you're not playing basketball, what do you like to do? Um, well, I live in a house with uh, six other guys, so we're always oh. busy. Um, Something's going on. Yeah. Um, I just hang out, you know, um, big on watching college basketball, so I'm watching college mm-hmm. basketball all the time. Um, like to go hunting here and there when I get a chance. Um Basically, just I mean, there's not much time outside sure. of basketball, so just trying to relax, hanging out with friends. You know, that's a lot of what I do outside of basketball. When you're watching a basketball game, do you watch it like just for enjoyment, or are you watching plays? Are you going, oh wow, that's cool? Or I mean, how how do you view it? Yeah, I got that little like coaching mindset of looking at like, oh look at they run, or are they going to double the post on him, or blah blah. blah. Like, how right. they're on their ball screen, they should. This and that, and just I always look at it and pick it apart a little bit. But who do you think is good that you've seen play other than the Tarios? We know we think um, the Tarios are good. Playing UConn, I think UConn's pretty good. What very well coached. Um, Purdue is a real deal. Always the always good. Um, Kansas, obviously, really good. Um, you know, I think in terms of the ACC, you know, I think Wake is sneaky good. Ooh. Um, Obviously, they've started three now. I think. Yep. Um, so I think they're pretty good. Um, and then last, I think just us. I think we're going to be up there and at the end of the year. And you know, I think if we just keep doing what we're doing and, and pay attention to the details, and the rest will take care of itself, and we'll be among the you know top five teams in the country when um, it's all said and done. I'm assuming the other five guys are not all basketball guys. I don't think they are. No, there. It's six um, of my fraternity brothers. Okay, so how do you think it's helped you have kind of more of a 
broad Carolina experience that you're not just hanging out with nothing but basketball guys? Um, I think it's been great. You know, it's been it's been huge just to, um, you know, like my first year um, was COVID, so I didn't really have a roommate. And then when I was a sophomore, um, I lived with Brady and Leakey. And so it's that was, you know, awesome. And it, but it was different than this. Um, and then just coming back, like, after a game and, like, not having to talk about basketball has been great for me personally, just because it's always in basketball. Basketball, it's nice to just like you know, just talk about something random or whatever happened last night or the, you know something funny that's going on between you and your friends. So it's like it's been helpful just to like you know step away from basketball a little bit when you get the chance to, because I think that's what everyone needs as athletes you know be able to have you know something separate from that that sport that they play. I bet you got some Brady and Leaky stories. Yeah, I was about to say that seems like a unique trio there. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Brady and Leaky lived upstairs in the apartment. I lived downstairs. We had one that was at Union you could connect. Um, there are some interesting stories. <laughs> yeah, some some funny stuff has happened. Um, all right, what uh, Carolina playing? Of course, State on Wednesday, and then moving through ACC. Not necessarily just about this game, but but what's important in your mind? as you guys move through the next uh, couple of months and, and head towards the postseason? Um, one, I think we just need to stay healthy. Um, you know, so far we've had minor injuries, so staying healthy would be huge for us, as well as just, you know, understanding it's a long season. You know, we might have, you know, a bump in the road. You might lose a game, and, like, that's not going to define, like, is how you respond, I think, you know. For us, it's just important to just like keep getting better every day and keep just locking in and, and trusting Coach Davis and trusting each other. Um, that and I think we're only going to get better. I really do. I mean, it's crazy if you could watch us. You know, I, Adams obviously watches all the time. Just how much better we've gotten, just even from the from when the season game one, not even right. from the summertime. So if we just keep getting better, you know, block out all the you know everyone saying you know you're so good this year blah 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 you know just keep our head down and just keep grinding i think that'll really help us um just continue to you know get wins and be successful 